Welcome to Better Preparedness. This episode is about the Vestergaard life straw. It's the kind of the easy guide to how to use it and the limitations because you need to know what the limitations are and hopefully you get a good experience out of this. It is extremely important that you read the user's manual. Let's talk about it. Well, what do you get? This. Plastic straw. Very, extremely light. It has a cord on it, which is I like that. It has a little cap on the top. That's the, where you put your mouth and that, that end here goes into your water source. How does it work? Well, you're supposed to soak it in clean water for about 20 minutes before you use it. That could be a bit of a tricky thing if you're really just down to this. Secondly, you are supposed to take about five sips to get the water flow going. I would probably spit that water out. Again, you've got the capacity. And if it starts to get a bit clogged, for various reasons, you can bell water back through and that will clean out the, the filter a bit. Here's one of the downsides to it. I'm about two feet above this lake water right now. If I needed to use this, I would have to crouch down to the level of the water. And that's going to be tricky in some environments. Maybe you're in a fast stretch of white water or there's a fast flowing river or it's spring or fall and the water is freezing, freezing cold. Yeah, This has to be into the water, probably, you know, ideally about that much so that it stays nicely in the water and you get a good flow through it. So you have to drink through it. I personally see this as an emergency device, as a backup. I have an MSR Mini Works bought it 22 years ago or so. I've used it to go across the Canadian North and many trips, either canoeing or biking or hiking. It's great. It's also bulky. Now there's better generations of, of water filters since then. The tricky thing with this is, is if I was doing a long trip or I, I was anticipating needing to drink a lot of water, well, either you have to have a container to bring that dirty water to you or you have to crouch down, head down, and get into that water source. And secondly, how often do you have water sources? Now, if you're, if you're stranded and this is all you have and there's water and you're staying put, that's, that's maybe okay because you'll be able to routinely drink and that will really help keep you alive for a lot longer than having no means to filter water and also avoid hopefully getting beaver fever and various other types of waterborne gut problems and, and things where you could get diarrhea and cramping. So that would be not much fun. But if you're traveling, if you're doing through the mountains or if you're hiking or you're biking, you're gonna go through a lot of liters of water each day. And if this is all you have, you wouldn't have much fun. Because uh, if you're trying to filter the equivalent of you know, five liters of water on hot days, how are you really going to do that? So you need to have the means to carry water with you if you if this was all you had. I think you're better placed to have a better system as your primary water source and then have this as a backup. Also think through how many people are using this. Is this just you and your partner? Maybe that's okay, but if you had other people in your group and you were sharing this, it kind of starts to get a bit icky, especially the bigger the group. So if this is part of an emergency kit, make sure you have the number of life straws required for the number of people. And again, they're really cheap, they're super light, they're compact, they won't take up a lot of space. In a, an emergency kit, I would probably actually put in a better quality pumping filter. But again, a few of these could work if it's just to give you an extra couple of days worth of survival. Find the best water possible. I, I highly recommend that you, you know, look at where the water is you're going to be drinking. And keep in mind, according to the owner's manual, you know, it doesn't filter salt. So forget salt water. It's not some magic tool to allow you to uh, drink seawater. Also, things like metals and various things, you, you don't want to get into that. That doesn't work in this. And that's probably also going to do you a lot of harm. If you're in a high agriculture zone, a lot of those chemicals and various things, chemicals are not uh, part of the what it does. So it sounds fantastic that it does you know, a lot of protozoan cysts and bacteria, but keep in mind, it doesn't do metals, doesn't do chemicals, doesn't do salt. And you're better off to try to find the best water and cleanest water possible. I think it's a great tool. And I'm going to put links to this in the description below and also on betterpreparedness.com, put a bunch of links to you know, products that I, I feel really work well for especially emergency drinking. Thanks for watching Better Preparedness. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and the little bell beside it. And if you like the video, please, please click that like button. It helps show Google that, well, you enjoyed the video. Thanks.